TechTown partnered with Minerva Education and Development Foundation, or MEDF, to offer 11th and 12th grade students the opportunity to pitch potential solutions to transportation issues in their various communities. Today, you'll hear some bold ideas from brilliant young people who have the chance to win over $2,700 in cash. So our first, absolutely, give it up for $2,700 in cash. So our first place is $1,100, second place is $900, and third place is $800. I'll start by thanking our judges who are here, and I'll give you a brief introduction on a few of them. Uh, so if our judges could maybe just kind of raise their hand, uh, introduce themselves. We'll start with Mr. Charles Tate of Bank of America. So Charles Tate is a senior vice president and senior relationship manager for the Southeast Michigan market in commercial banking at Bank of America Merrill Lynch. In this capacity, his responsibilities include leading a team of specialists focused on understanding each client's unique needs to deliver strategic financial guidance and solutions. Mr. Charles Tate. All right, y'all give it up for Mr. Tate. Next, we have Sherelle Streeter, who is a senior mobility strategist at the City of Detroit's Office of Mobility Innovation, where she primarily works on projects, pilots, and programs related to active transportation and micro-mobility, including managing Detroit's e-scooter program. Please give it up for Sherelle Streeter. Next, we have Dr. Brandy Brown, who is the Chief Innovation Officer at Walker Miller Energy Services. She blends research and emerging technology to deliver innovative energy solutions to historically marginalized communities. Give it up for Dr. Brandy Brown. All right, so our judges will be deliberating during lunch, and the winners will be announced at 2 p.m. after the fireside chat with Dr. Donna Bell. Also joining us today is Ms. Gwen Prater, president of MEDF. Give it up for Dr. Prater, I mean, Ms. Prater. So Gwendolyn Prater is the president of MEDF, which is the Minerva Education and Development Foundation. It's a 40 -tier, she's a 40-tier year veteran of corporate America. Her work spans across the automotive and aerospace industries and includes experience in manufacturing, quality control, and industrial engineering. Her expertise is in supply chain, purchasing, and de supplier diversity. Please welcome Glenn Gwen to the stage. Thank you. Good morning. I am honored to be a part of this innovative event. It is a pleasure to partner with TechTown for the second year to provide opportunities for students to here in the metropolitan Detroit area. MEDF, Minerva Education and Development Foundation, was established in 1992 to provide scholarships and grants for economic development. Since our inception, we've donated over $700,000 in grants and scholarships that support youth and families in our communities. We are commemorating our 30 years of philanthropy at a celebration October 29th this year. We hope that some of you are able to join us. Today, we will hear from six phenomenal high school students as they pitch their ideas to solve issues related to mobility. The six students are part of the Ecotech Labs in Detroit, established by Mr. Keith Young. The students are presenting their research on mobility projects conducted in the program. Ecotech Labs is a science research organization dedicated to supporting the scientists of tomorrow. The program focuses on creating opportunities for academically gifted middle and high school students to participate in international scientific research ventures, many of which are tied to United Nations activities. Let's give them a hand for that opportunity. The students will have three minutes to give their pitch. Judges will then have two minutes for questions after each one. 
we are ready to proceed. Good luck to all of our students. Our first pitch is from Jonathan Bryant, Matronics Universal Adapter for EVs. Good morning, everyone, again. Uh, my name is Jonathan Bryant. I'm a senior researcher at Ecotech Lab. I've been a part of the lab since I was in eighth grade. I'm currently in the 12th grade. And my company for today is Medtronics. Medtronix is a research and development company that specializes in design and production of electric vehicle accessories using additive manufacturing, which is also known as 3D printing. Um, an early seed venture from Ecotech Lab Research and Innovation Program, which was also launched in 2020. Um, to reiterate, I am a senior at Renaissance High School. I've been in the lab since the eighth grade, and my focus is on mechanical engineering and civil and automotive industries, and I've worked on this project for two years plus. So for my problem statement, the, la the lack of interoperability and the short life cycle of charging adapters makes owning an EV more costly. So the lack of adaptation of um, EV technology materials and accessories as well makes it harder for consumers to actually purchase electric vehicles and to use them on a day-to-day -day basis. So from my market solution, I wanted to develop a universal adapter for electric vehicles that is adaptable with electric vehicle charging stations and vehicles regardless of the brand. So let's say you have a Tesla electric vehicle or a Chevy electric vehicle and there's only Tesla charging stations around or some other different brand of charging stations. You should be able to use whatever electric vehicle car that you have and go to whatever charging station regardless of the brand. And that's something you can't do currently, but that is our goal. So our product design, interoperable model that has one-to-many relationships, it can be stalled it can be installed by the owner with minimal technical knowledge so you don't have to know too much about electric vehicles to be able to use it, similar to how you have universal adapters for like your phone and things like that. And then it meets the American society of um, testing and material standards for conductivity and electrical charging reliability. So for our target customers, the target market for our universal electric vehicle adapters would be the OEMs, and the repair outlets of manufacturers of electric vehicle charging stations. So for example, we have some um, examples such as AutoZone, O'Reilly, Advanced Auto Parts, and companies like that. So our marketing and distribution and customer plan, our direct sales to buyers of automotive repair retail stores and charging unit manufacturers. So we would direct the product to the actual companies themselves that sell the automotive parts so they're easily um, accessible to actual consumers themselves. And then um, we would establish a web store using the Amazon supply chain network so that if you can't go physically to get the actual adapter yourself, you can go to Amazon and order it online as well. Okay, and so these are our estimated revenue projections. Some assumptions based on the actual revenue projections would be the estimated new unit sales for year one to year three are 39,000 and then um, for year one is 39,000, year two is 82,500, then year three will be 172,000 respectively. It will be a market share of 0.5% and 1% over the first three years respectively. So the sale price of the adapter would be um, $30 per unit, assumably, and then um, the cost to manufacture the adapter would be $15. And then this is my pitch. Well, Jonathan, thank you very much for the presentation. Great work. If I may start with this first question, towards the marketing side, what, do you, what is your plan to market the material to reach out to your target base? Um, so I can go back to the... Uh, all right. But um, my overall plan to actually market the adapter itself would be to um, sell it to the OEM, so like AutoZone, I would actually... Um, market myself and the actual uh, adapter itself to these different companies. And so from there, it can be spread out um, worldwide through their uh, actual stores and through actually Amazon supply chain too. So I'll use that same method for Amazon and those other stores like that. Yeah. 
Nice work, Jonathan. Uh, my question pertains to the target customers down the line after you're reaching out to those retail uh, entities. Uh, do you, have you given any thought to what customers are more likely to purchase your product? Um, so due to the uh, estimated rise in electric vehicles that are supposed to happen over the next few years, um, the consumers, of course, would be uh, aimed towards more people that are uh, buying electric vehicles since that's becoming the new normal over the years. And so um, given it thought that um, that would be my main consumer along with actually people that have uh, normal cars now because they could be used as a motivator to actually buy electric vehicles because sometimes people wouldn't want to get an electric vehicle because it either one costs too much or two they don't have um, easy access to a certain charging station which is what the adapter is all about and so it would increase accessibility um, decrease cost and stuff like that to make it more marketable to the consumer itself. So. Thank you. Uh, thanks for your presentation. Um, my question is, have you thought about um, your potential competition? So for example, um, Tesla, adapt, uh, Tesla charging stations may be for Tesla cars. Do you foresee any issues or any ways to how you navigate um, these private charging station companies, um, you know, potential efforts to compete with this, you know, adaptable uh, attachment? Um. So to answer your question, we would try, as a company, we would try to make it our own first and then kind of expand starting from the ground up. And so um, we wouldn't necessarily like go to our competition directly to try to give them this adapter. We would try to have to make it our own and then go through the actual um, AutoZone or OEM consumers like that. And then I actually have a, uh, my prototype for the adapter itself. This is made out of TPU filament. And this is actually a Tesla um, charging adapter for electric vehicles as well. And so just as like a quick comparison of kind of how we would want it to work. And um, but yeah, basically to answer your question, we would just start from the ground up and go from there. Thank you to Jonathan. Our next pitch is from Joshua Miller, AIT, Artificial Intelligence for Autonomous Vehicles. Good, good morning. My name is Joshua Miller. I am a senior at University Prep Science and Math High School. I started in the lab in 2019 and I started my project here with AIT two years ago. Here's the, problem. the problem is with autonomous vehicles that they can't recognize pedestrians. Recently, uh, self-driving Uber actually killed someone because they couldn't recognize her. And with the growing interest of autonomous vehicles in North America, how can we ensure that these autonomous vehicles actually detect people, especially in urban environments like Detroit, where there's lots of many people of color? My solution would be to develop a custom artificial intelligence specifically for navigation in the urban communities to ensure that no pedestrians or citizens are ever harmed by autonomous vehicles. With these pictures here, you can see the very code and the inner workings of our product. Cascade SRC, for example, is the system that uses the, a reference, is a reference tool in the program to gather the information. And then the video SRC is where we put in the video to test the program. And lower at the bottom, the gray equals CV2 color, and the B2 gray is where the boxes are drawn over the object to make sure it actually, the program is actually detecting the vehicle or the person. The target market for my product would be OEMs, especially for General Motors. 
marketing and distribution would be through downloadable programs that can be updated as long as the car is connected to the internet. I estimated revenue sales would be, my market share will be starting at 0.5% in the beginning of the year, selling my product for $500 per vehicle for a year license and $100 per unit of license maintenance with an expected 100% renewal of licenses each year, which drives up the revenue, as you see, in years two and three. That is my pitch. Any questions? Thank you for that uh, great presentation, Joshua. My question uh, is regarding the price that you set for your product. How did you go about setting the price? Well, I had to calculate how my company would make a product and what would be the best way to do it. And most programs that you see today are sold through licenses and downloadable products. So I took inspiration from that in creating my uh, price tag. Thank you. Thanks for your presentation. Um, my question was about the type of vehicles. Are you looking to this, this for this to be the standard, you know, private vehicle, or are you looking for this to be integrated in other autonomous vehicles like delivery robots or micro transit shuttles? So currently, my product is for mainly vehicles. At the moment. I haven't yet to think about marketing towards any, anything else autonomous-wise, but we, uh, I will take that into consideration. Thank you. You know, great idea. Um, I'll be honest with you. It seems like it's something that should already be out there. Can, can you define, is there currently a market of a similar product in existence currently? Yes, actually, there is a competitor named Yono Arc that's based in Germany that uses a similar process and system to what we use. I actually, that's how I actually got into this, by using Yono Arc to see how it worked in the downtown area. I took videos with my teammates, videos of downtown Detroit, and we ran it through Yono Arc, and that's what gave me the idea to make AIT and uh, do it here. Wonderful. The thing I found throughout working with companies is a lot of times is utilizing and working together and taking ideas to take it to a higher level. It's not a point always about competing against each other, but providing a product or service that can help out. And this is a, be a great opportunity to help society. Thank you, Joshua. Our next pitch Number three is from Nina Martinez and Anastasia Davis. Data dial dialogics, integration of biosensors in EVs and AVs. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nina Martinez, and this is my partner, Anteja Davis. We are freshmen at American International Academy in Inkster, and we have been in the Ecotech Lab since 2022. Our current, our current problem statement is that there is no mass production and development of biosensors in cars that can provide you real-time information regarding the health of the driver. So our market opportunity is going to be, a market opportunity is going to, oh, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Okay, so according to the National Transportation Safety Board, nearly 20% of car accidents in 2022 were linked to medical emergencies such as heart attacks, asthma, and diabetic seizures. Our market, our market solution is to develop a real-time monitoring system that is integrated into the steering wheel to monitor your blood sugar and blood oxygen levels. Our current SWOT analysis is that our strengths will be that our technology is mature, our weaknesses is that there could be a distraction to the driver with this, 
Our opportunities is to reduce accidents and medical emergencies, and our current threat is a competitor rising to plagiarize our idea. <laughs> Our current product design is to embed, embed sensors into the steering wheel, so whenever you hold the steering wheel, all your information, such as your blood oxygen level and your glucose levels, will be showing up on your dashboard. Our current target customers are OEMs of automobiles and autonomous electric and international combustion engines, ICE. How we plan to market these to our customers is that we are going to put direct sales where we sign research partnerships with OEMs and demonstrate our technology at auto shows. So our assumptions in our revenue projects is that we expect a 13.4 million cars to be sold each year. Our market share will be half a percent, three quarters of a percent, and one percent over the first three years, respectively. Our estimated new sales from one to year three are 25, 25, 25K. 25K, 37K. 37K and 50K units respectively. Our sale prices for our sensors will be $30 per vehicles and $15 for our, sensors. For our sensors. And that is it. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. Uh, really appreciate it. My question is regarding the software costs. So if you have the sensors and the steering wheel, you'll need software uh, to be able to analyze that data. Is that software cost inclusive in your price that you listed? Well, we made an estimate of it. We did our research and we did the calculating and we and we decided that that would be the best price for it. So yes, it will be with our revenue. Thank you. Thank you for a great presentation. Um, the question I had was about the data itself. So who would have access to this information? Would it, could it potentially be the OEMs, the car manufacturers? So if someone was to purchase the vehicle and would, would the private companies have access to uh, these you know, potential health conditions of their consumers? I think that would be the best to do because it'd be better for the people and the consumers to see how well they're doing. If you were just to, if the market, the market people weren't able to see how well the consumers would be doing, it probably just wouldn't work out too well. Thank you as well for everything. If I may ask, had you guys contemplated aftermarket for the product? Well, we haven't really gotten that far yet. Respectfully understand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Pitch number four is from Omari Ishmael. Aeronautical Systems, Lithium Sulfur Battery Technology for Use in Drone Taxis. Good afternoon, good, good morning. My name is Omari Ishmael. My pitch for today is Aeronautical Systems, Leaders in Drone Engineering. About us. Aeronautical Systems is a research and development company that specializes the design and production of accessories for the aerospace industry. This is an early seed venture from Ecotech Lab Research and Innovation Program, launched in 2020. I am a senior at Davis Aerospace High School. I have been in Ecotech Lab since the seventh grade. I am currently a FA certified drone pilot, and my focus on mechanical, mechanical engineering and aerospace, robotics, and automotive industries. The problem statement. The problem is the battery technology for electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles is efficient, which was, what is inefficient, which is limiting the expansion of green technology in the aerospace industry. 
market opportunity. There, are about four, there will be about 14.7 billion in the evil toll market growth by 2041. Second, North, North America was the largest region in the evil toll market by tw in 2021. My market solution, to, de to de 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 develop a lithium sulfur battery for evil tolls with extended range the key to success for Evil Tolls as a viable mode of transportation is the ability to provide extended range and reliability. Lithium sulfur batteries offer a promising solution in this regard as they offer a higher energy density compared to traditional lithium ion batteries. By developing, by developing this lithium sulfur battery specifically for Evil Tolls, my company is offering a solution that not only provides extended range but also reduces the weight and overall size of the energy storage system which is crucial for improved performance and efficiency for the Evil Tour. The resulting battery will allow drone taxis to fly longer distances, making them more practical and accessible for consumers. Our product, our product design. Our product design is low weight. Lithium software batteries are lighter than lithium ion batteries, making them ideal for aerospace applications where, where weight reduction is crucial for improved energy efficiency and performance. Lower cost. Lithium, lithium sulfur batteries are made with abundant, inexpensive materials, making them potentially less expensive to produce compared to lithium ion batteries. Our target consumer. The target consumer for our lithium sulfur battery are OEMs of drone taxis. So we have Joby, Vertical, and a couple more companies. Marketing and distribution to customer. Demonstrations of battery technology at Evil Tool conferences participation in national programs with world governments. Our revenue productions, assumptions. Estimate, estimated new unit sales for year one to year three are 5,000, 15,000, and 130,000. Market share of 0.5%, 0.75%, 0.75%, over the first two years. Sale price of lithium sulfur battery is 1,500 1, unit per unit. Cost to manufacture adapter is $1,000. And that concludes my pitch. Thank you again. Thank you. Uh, you know, just for my own clarification, um, for the problem itself, by reducing the weight of the battery will improve the efficiency in, in, in short? Uh, repeat your question? Sure. <clears throat> sure. Thank you. Yep. By reducing the weight of the lithium battery, right. that's what's going to assist in the improved efficiency? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, my question was about, um, have you thought about the energy efficiency of the battery when it comes to the type of EVTOL? So EVTOL is used for you know, transporting people versus transporting goods, so freight EVTOS. Um, for our lithium sulfur battery, I think our, our battery would be uh, for all types of EVTOS. Great presentation, uh, great subject. Uh, my question is future facing and thinking about what you know about people and human behavior when we have technology uh, that we're able to uh, make more efficient and expand usage of, uh, are there any areas that you could see your product expanding beyond, expanding to beyond your target market? Yes, so currently, uh, as you see on the news, the. Currently, the Ford Lighting is currently having problems with their batteries. So I think our lithium sulfur batteries can also help EVs. Thank you. Okay, thank you again, Omari. Our next pitch is from Kayla Young. Forest Technologies Heat Resistant Protection Systems for EVs. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kayla Young, and I am the senior researcher of the developing company Future Forest. 
So about us, Future Forest is a developing and uh, research company that specializes in the design and production of sustainable uh, materials from natural resources. Um, I've been a part of Ecotech Lab since I was in the third grade. I am a senior at Renaissance High School. Um, my focus is on bioproducts and sustainable packaging, and I have also experienced using bioproduct design using lignin. So our problem. So as we know, with our um, electrical vehicles, they can be a fire hazard, especially the battery, for example, if it's overheating. So um, that, especially uh, based on natural disasters, such as right here, the hurricane, that could affect the battery, causing it a fire hazard to the people that are using it or that are around the vehicle. So our market opportunity is in 2022, 7.8 million electrical vehicles were sold worldwide. And our estimate for 2023 is an additional 3.2 million will also be sold. Our market solution. Um, the market solution for this project here is to develop a bio green based protection against fires uh, around the, the lithium battery that could catch fire. Some of our analysis would be, it's a great solution. Uh, a weakness we would have is a long production cycle. So opportunities would create more jobs and more car companies would use this. And some of our threats would be the supply distribution, so making sure we have enough. Our product design. So for people that don't know, lignin comes from the under root of the tree. So before you have in the roots, inside of the tree bark is lignin, which can be formed into a powder form. From there, you can turn it into a foam form uh, in the course of two days and wrap it around the lithium uh, battery for protection. And that stops it from, that slows down the cycle of it burning and it also, it, it also lowers the cost of manufacturing. So our target uh, customer would be the uh, automobile companies such as Tesla that are really known for using their uh, automotive cars, Honda, Ford, and uh, Mercedes-Benz. Our market, marketing and distribution to the consumer would uh, be going to auto shows and uh, direct sales to repair shops. Our revenue projections would be, since we know that 7.8 was sold last year and another 3.2 would be sold, 75% um, uh, and 1% over the first three years. An estimate of one to three years are 39,000, 58, 500,000, and 78,000. And the sale prices for the lignin protection would be $20 per unit, while the cost to manufacture each unit would be $5, while the net margin would be $15. And this is my project, thank you. Thanks, Kayla, for your presentation. Um, the question I had was around um, how adapt adaptable um, this product will be for different vehicles. So will it be just for your standard, again, private vehicle, or could it be adaptable to different type of EVs, which include like e-bikes and e-scooters, which also have the, this potential ha hazard? Um, thank you for that question. That's a very Nice question. I, I really think that this product here, since it's designed directly around a car, since it's supposed to go on like a, it's a big battery designed around the car, I think this will be for right now for our electrical vehicle cars. Until then, we'll create a smaller uh, battery, lithium battery, for the scooters that we have and the bikes and things. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Kayla. Uh, as your company expands, how would you manage the resource extraction of lignin in a sustainable way? That is one thing that I've always thought about. I know we want to make this efficient for the community. However, you don't want to overuse your product like we usually do. I think definitely um, making, taking a large amount of lignin from a certain type of tree and keep manufacturing the same type of lignin that we have. So instead of going back and getting new lignin every time, we will keep using the same one that, that will be created. Wonderful, thank you for that, because that was actually the question that I had and you answered it wonderfully. So thank you very much for your presentation and for the information. Thank you. So 
I don't know about you guys, but these are some phenomenal presentations. Um, and Ecotech is doing an awesome job preparing them for such a time as this in training and, and guidance and, and uh, educating them on these, uh, this uh, new system we're working in. And our last presentation today, last but not least, is from Drew Keys, EV2 Lightweighting Methods and Finite Element Analysis of Powertrain Systems for EVs and AVs. Uh, good morning, you guys. Uh, my name is Drew Keys. I attend Renaissance High School, as well as uh, Jonathan and Kayla, who presented before me. And I am a senior researcher at Ecotech Lab. Uh, EV2 is an early seed venture from the Ecotech Lab Research and Innovation Program that is focused on developing an autonomous ride sharing uh, service to improve mobility in urban communities. And we would do this by using light weighting processes and material engineering. This uh, company was launched in, last year in 2022. And, um, Again, I attend Renaissance High School. I've been in Ecotech Lab since the fifth grade, 2016, and my focus is on mechanical engineering. Uh, so the problem we're trying to solve is the cost effectiveness of EV and AV ride sharing. Uh, it's really expensive for Detroit residents, and there's really no other alternative or cost efficient ride sharing system available in the city. And we would target this uh, to youth and senior citizens, where it would be probably used the most. Um, and this cost-efficient ride-sharing system that I'm talking about is seen through um, the queue line and other public transit, like buses and stuff, and it's shown to be inadequate to support people living outside of Midtown and Downtown, and it's kind of just, it doesn't encourage people to use public transit, you know. So the market opportunity, uh, the prospect of self-driving cars, which are anticipated to dramatically lower the cost of ride-sharing services, has led to the rise in the concept of mobility as a service mass. And um, so that's where our market solution comes in. Um, the SWOT analysis for mass is that the benef it benefits the whole city and reduces dependency on bus services like the queue line and stuff, and it's a lower price than Uber and Lyft. Um, some weaknesses, though, is that the cost of deployment and design may be higher than on the front end. Opportunities are opportunities to advance material science in AV transport and to extend cycle times, and then the threats are low adaptation, I mean low adoption of this technology, the lightweighting technology. So our service offering, offering is lightweight processes, um, like lightweight battery housing and the lightweight wheels, wheel uh, base from the chassis, and the lightweight front suspension. And so these would be beneficial to our service because lightweighting the product would mean that it increases the overall efficiency of the car and the service in general, and while decreasing the materials and money spent on the overall product. So our target would be OEMs, um, autom autonomous and electric OEMs. And then our marketing to the customer, the customer would probably come to us with a part they would want to lightweight, and then we would lightweight it to them. And that's our, that'll demonstrate our technology. So we expect 5 million autonomous vehicles to be manufactured each year for the ride sharing purposes. Our market penetration rate is 0.5%, 0.75%, and 1% um, through one through three years, respectively. The primary product we would uh, sell is our battery housing. And the cost to, the sale of the product would be 850. The cost to manufacture would be 450, so the, pro um, the profit would be about $400 per unit. And then we expect the sales to be 25K, 37.5K, and then 50K for through one through three years, respectively. And then that is my pitch.
Thanks, Drew. Um, my question is, um, just to be clear, you're saying that the um, product will make the, well, it's a two-part question. So the product will make the vehicles more lightweight. Would it increase the speed for an autonomous vehicle? Because right now the market is, you know, autonomous vehicles are going around 15 miles per hour to up to maybe 35, which is good on most streets, <laughs> but, um, well, on some streets, but we know that, you know, it's not the highest of speeds. So I was wondering, would, do you know to what effect that, that could increase the speed of the, what effect, to what effect could this product increase the speed of the vehicle? Yeah, thank you. That was a great question. Um, so light weighting is beneficial not only to decreasing weight, but um, it has other effects add on. So one of those being faster, being a faster car is one of those effects, as well as fuel management. I know it doesn't run on gasoline because it's an electric car. So probably battery management and then fuel efficiency and then overall weight, you know, handling and stuff like that. So yeah, that would be one of the effects of light weighting. Thank you as well, Drew, for the presentation. Um, can you speak towards the competitive landscape if your marketing research has provided that to you thus far? Um, can you repeat your question? Sure. One more time? Currently, what's the competitive landscape with this same similar product? Yeah, so um, light weighting and kind of simulations that we use for FEA, finite element analysis simulations. So that's kind of the thing. Um, we can always simulate stuff, but um, we would still need to experiment with that. That's kind of a competitor. Some people might not see the need for simulations and, you know, our service. Thank you, Drew. Uh, I would like to know if you foresee any manufacturing constraints while scaling up to serve your target market, and if so, what use case would you target first? Uh, so our target is um, the youth and senior citizens within the population of urban communities. Uh, but some manufacturing kind of problems that would be is probably along with the simulation again, because a simulation is, you know, you still have to prove that it works in real life. So yeah, that would probably be something. This concludes our pitch competition on solving issues related to mobility technology. Thank you to all the participants, and if we can give them another big hand. Thank you. What an exhilarating day we've had from the panel discussions to the amazing fireside chat we just had with Dr. Dr. Bell uh, with the words of wisdom and our amazing pitch con competition. It was awesome hearing from the students today. It, we've learned a lot just by seeing their presentations and hearing their uh, information. So it's time now to announce the winners of the 2023 Mobility Pitch Competition. And will you please come up when I call your name? The third prize winner is Joshua Miller, AIT, Artificial <laughs> Intelligence. <laughs> Joshua, congratulations. Our second prize winner is Jonathan Bryant, Matronics <laughs> Universal Adapter. And drum roll. <laughs> Thank you. The first prize winner is Kayla Young, Forest Technologies. <laughs> okay. 
Now, there, there are no losers in this, this group. Every participant whose name I didn't call will receive a $500 prize. Congratulations, and thank you all for participating.